Is God still good? Yes. All the time? Yes. And all the time? God is good. So, uh, I don't know how to do this, uh, because I was told by the Lord, I'm to preach on heaven. So, guys, this is a really cool message for y'all. Um, I, uh, this is, uh, hey, Nick, my, my voice. Yeah. Um, so, uh, we're going to go through a couple verses, a couple, uh, I will, I will forewarn you, I, I may get pretty emotional, and I think it's because, I think it's because, I think it's because of the glory. Uh, guys, I preach tough messages because God requires the cross from us. We shouldn't require any less from anybody else. If he requ requires the cross from us, we need to require the cross from our kids. We need to require the cross from our spouses. We need to require the cross from anybody we come in contact with. The cross brings life to those who are, who've, who've never been touched. But the cross brings death to the flesh, to the Christian, because the Christian needs to suffer loss. The Christian needs to know what they're living for. This is a message today. Heaven, what is it like? Heaven, what is it like? By the way, Natanya had a dream about heaven today. Uh, awesome. <laughs> can you share it? You don't have to be in, in the camera, but can you... Can you share what you dreamed about? What, what did you dream today? about? Yeah, and mommy were dancing out of white dress. How beautiful. Aww, that's so sweet. You know... Miss, Le Miss Leanne. Mama. It goes with this verse. Go to 1 Corinthians 2. Who's ready for some comfort? All of us. I said, who's ready for some comfort? Me. me. Hallelujah. Me. Me. There's only one other person that I've ever heard that preached on heaven without actually being there. I've heard people having testimonies they were actually in heaven. Uh, I think if, you, if you've never seen the movie, Don Piper's 90 Minutes in Heaven, you need to pick it up immediately and watch it. Watch it with your family. There's a couple scenes in there that are a little intense because he was Don Piper, who's still alive now, was killed and he was 90 minutes dead. He was pronounced dead, etc. And he was revived. I mean, he endured uh, such agonizing rehabilitative treatments. But he could walk and it's just, and he had depression because, God, why did you leave me here? Coco. Coco place. First Corinthians. First Corinthians two verse nine. But as it is written, what I did not see and ear did not hear, and what never entered the human mind, God prepared this for those who love him. I'm gonna explain a couple things. And then um Go right now to Isaiah 64 because that's what he's referencing, and then we'll we'll just uh, hey. 
Lord, I don't know what to do with this message, but I will share it. I will tell you guys this. Hey, Nahum, you sit here, just so you can keep it nice. Yeah. Um, when Leanne was suffering, she was undergoing the transformation of her spirit, her inner person, and the wasting away of her outer shell. This momentary light affliction cannot compare to the eternal weight of glory. Guys, I'm a living testimony. Every time I walked into that room, I touched heaven. The hospital generally was peaceful. I've been in hospitals, you walk in and there is evil. You just sense the presence of darkness. I went in, I went in her room. I was not sad a bit. Folks, I was not sad one bit. I walked in the room, I was like, oh God. If you come any close, I'm going to go too. People came in. People got baptized in the Holy Spirit. One lady got healed after years of unforgiveness towards her family who abused her. And immediately, her nutritionist said, something's different about you. She said, it's Jesus. I live for him now. You can't go into where I've been and walk away untouched. You touch the very presence of God. And everything falls away. There is what Isaiah 64 from ancient times no one has heard. No one has listened. No one has seen any God except you. And he's talking to Jesus, who acts on behalf of the one who waits for him. We sang a song by Shane and Shane. I miss you. Put down your paper plate. I'm waiting for that China. Mm, yes. Mm. I miss you. I want to be where you are. You welcome the one who joyfully does what is right. They remember you in your ways. Ah. Isaiah sixty five sixteen. For the former troubles will be forgotten and hidden from my sight. And then Isaiah 66. This is what the Lord says. Heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. Starting in verse 1. What house could you possibly build for me? Or what place could be my home? My hand made all these things and so they came into being. This is the Lord's declaration. The next section of the verse he's talking about seems sort of disconnected, but I believe he's trying to give us a hint of where his home is. Y'all ready for this? Mm -hmm. He says this. The whole time he's talking about my home, my home, my home. Keep that in the backdrop. What is the home? I will look favorably on this kind of person. But he just talked about home. Do you understand that God's dwelling is your body? Amen. This is the mystery of godliness, Christ in you. One who is humble, broken in spirit, and trembles at my word. Guys, have you answered the call? Verse six or verse four. Because I called, no one answered. I spoke and they didn't hear. They did what was evil in my sight and chose what I didn't delight in. Heaven 
is a place where sickness doesn't exist. I had a vision of Leanne. Thin, smiling, full color, luscious hair. She used to swing dance in college. She was dancing and as Natanya shared in a white dress, smiling from ear to ear. No pain, no tears. There, I remember crying out, screaming in that room, saying, Lord, I've given you my life, why don't you take me? Mm. And he told me, because I didn't want yours, I wanted hers. And he said to me after I watched that movie, Don Piper, 90 Minutes in Heaven, sorry this is a little more testimony time, but I knew for certain we'd sing the song, no one ever cared for me like Jesus. And that verse, if my life could be a testimony, the testimony is this, no one cared for me like Jesus did. You get the privilege of knowing that nothing on this earth will trouble you. No alcoholic husband, no drugs, no shootings in the park, nothing like that will harm you. No disconnection of mind, no inability to express words, no impulsive behavior, guilty, where I get lost in what I'm doing. No frustrations, there's no frustrations. There's no Kleenex in heaven. Guys, there's no more spankings in heaven. There's no more disciplinings in heaven. Do you guys understand that those who have caused you such grief here, one, the grief is not there, and the people, you don't even take thought. I wonder if they're in hell, or I wonder what. Well, even the, the dread of where they might be going if they're still living, that's not there. Nothing is there that can steal the eternal, ever-present joy. Folks, that's here when Christ is in you. There's an ever-present joy. In your presence there are pleasures forevermore. And at your right hand, you get that only by obedience. And how do you obey? Jesus says himself in, in, in Luke's Gospel, how do you say you love me and you don't do what I say? You want to do what he says? Look at Jesus. Look at the cross. Give of yourself. Deny yourself. It's not convenient. I don't care. Deny yourself. But this hurts. Deny yourself. It's not about you. I don't want to do this. It's not a matter that God doesn't care. He does care. But he says, I love you. This is good for you. Do it. Do you guys understand that you hinder the touch of heaven when you don't submit to the circumstances of this life? The circumstance, the, as Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 4, says like this. Even though our outer person, verse 16, is being destroyed. Our inner person is being renewed day by day. Amen. We are struck down but not destroyed. We always carry the death of Jesus in our body. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 6. Paul, he had every right to take it for himself. 
Every right to make a living from the gospel. Every right to charge for just being there. Say, hey, I'm taking up a donation. Uh, we need funds. Uh, I need 5,000 uh, denarii to make it to... Su no, you never did that. Look, if, if, if what I've said blesses you, please consider giving. No, you never did that either. Sorry. It's probably offensive to people here. He said, look, there's a problem in Macedonia. Would you mind giving so I could take it to them? He did that. He says this, verse 3. We give no opportunity for stumbling to anyone so that the ministry will not be blamed. But as God's ministers... They're the most obscure ones. We commend ourselves in everything by great endurance, by afflictions, by hardship, by difficulties, by beatings, by imprisonments, by riots, labors. How many parents here, sleepless nights, working night shift, I know what it's like, by times of hunger? We were actually hungry. It actually happened to us. We were in Bloomington. I'm not boasting myself, God forbid. I'm sharing testimony. I actually lost 10 pounds. Wire racks and Nana was pregnant. We said, Lord, we're hungry. And a person from another part of the country randomly and urgently called. Is everything okay? What's going on? Well, we're down on the last diaper could use some food. Oh my. And they sent us, wired us money. And we had to order pizza because we were so weak. And the Lord told me when I took that first bite, He said, I was testing you. Do you love me? Years later, we contacted that friend and they said, you don't know what I had to go through. I never wired anything before in my life, but I knew it was so urgent that I had to do something immediately. I said, you don't know what you did for us. By purity, by knowledge, by patience, by kindness, by the Holy Spirit, by sincere love, by the message of truth, by the power of God, through weapons of righteousness on the right hand and the left, through glory and dishonor, through slander and good report, as deceivers yet true. Yeah, we look like we're deceiving people. No. The message of the gospel is offensive. It's offensive to the unbeliever and it's offensive to those in the church. As unknown, but yet recognized. As dying and look, we live. As being disciplined, yet not killed. As grieving, yet always rejoicing. As poor, yet enriching many. If you're poor, what do you have to give? As having nothing, yet possessing everything. What did they possess? What did these men who had absolutely nothing, what did they possess? Jesus Christ himself living in them. So heaven is like, it can be attained here on earth. It can be. In its fullness, we still have a veil. It's this flesh. It's this earthly tent. It's a time, it's a when people slander you, revile you, things fall on the floor and break, and you say, thank you, Jesus. You've given me more than I deserve. It is screaming at the top of your lungs. Thank you for the years that I had with my spouse. And she's home. Heaven is, thank you, Lord, that I'm one day closer to being in your presence. Heaven is like a bride. Sorry, guys. Those who are not married. <laughs> Writes love letters to her husband who's far off in war, waiting for him. 50 years. One day. She opens the door and there he stands. Heaven is, this is to my kids and to anybody who's lost a parent. I've, I've lost a parent. It's 
So when they come back from the store after being gone, and then you pick up right where you left off, and nothing has changed. Where there's no pain, there's just a peace that flows like a river. It literally is like a river. Heaven is the ability not to run to a substance, mm -hmm. to a thing here on earth, to make you feel good or comfortable. Mm -hmm. You always want to run to that stupid thing. I gotta get something that'll make me feel good. Mm -hmm. Those of you that have been struggling with illnesses, it's that. Well, maybe it's this supplement. Maybe it's this doctor. Mm. Maybe my husband will love me now. Mm. If he's on drugs or alcohol. Maybe if I just work harder, or try better, or pray this way or pray that way. Sorry, you're not in control of your husband. Maybe my daddy will like me if we do this or do that. Sorry, guys. You're not in control of your father. You're not in control of your mother. Maybe my brothers won't treat me this way. Sorry, I'm not in control of them. Heaven is you being able to give to them when you've got nothing to give. When you think you have nothing to give. Heaven is the ability to be up all night as if you didn't lose any sleep. Heaven is the ability. It's not, it, it is a physical place, and, and there are many, many, many testimonies to heaven. Heaven is a place where you, if you ever had tears, they would be of joy and they would never stop flowing because of the sheer presence and beauty of Jesus Christ. Heaven is the place where you have a connection. If you've been married more than once in the Lord and they passed on, they're there. And there's no bickering, there's no fighting, there's no jealousy. There's pure banquet, feasting. Heaven is a place where all your unborn babies are happy. Mothers, for those of you who have aborted babies, I'm sorry. But take courage in knowing that the Lord watches over those children. Heaven is a place where you're reunited with those children. Heaven is a place where you have a name for those children. And they know who you are. Heaven is a place where you have need of nothing. You have want of nothing. Heaven is a place not even the word devil comes to mind. Heaven is a place where you can see plants and trees, fruit of all kinds, many spectrums of color, not just one spectrum of seven, many spectrums. Heaven is a place where there's always a new song. Heaven is a place where you don't get bored. There's no pain. Heaven is a place where faith becomes sight, where your hope is made real. Heaven is a place where there's there's a love that is in you and outside of you, where it just fills you, where that's the environment, is love. Guys, I've never seen heaven, but I know what it's like. I've touched it. I was there. Heaven is a place of worship where you can touch it. When we talk about emotions, we talk about love. You can touch love. How do you touch love? 
People try to do it with sex. People try to do it with pornography. And those of you who are homosexuals and are really struggling with that, you're not going to get loved that way. You get loved through Jesus Christ who poured out his life for you. Heaven is not, love is not, get married, great, now I have love, now maybe I'll be loved. No, you women, young ladies who are giving yourselves, no, you're not going to get loved that way. You get loved that way, you get loved through Jesus Christ, he gave it all already, that's why he said it's finished. <laughs> love is tangible, this is how we know what love is. That the very God of the universe gave his life for us. 1 John 3.16. My wife was a picture of love. She gave her life so nine children could be born. She gave her life for me so that I could tell you guys this testimony. I saw heaven not in pictures, not in substance. Some people have died and gone to heaven. But I saw an experience. When you see a person, I just want to be where you are. And all they say is, and they knew their race was done. That's heaven. Heaven is a place where it's not, I know I live here, but I'm going there. No, I'm going back there. Where you know I'm here visiting. Heaven is a place where you're like, I'm going home. There's nothing here. Nothing for me here. That's what heaven is. Heaven is, in the end, if a plate Breaks. It's a plate. Let's clean up the mess. When your kids get so stinking angry and they cuss up a storm, say, honey, I love you. I'm sorry. Heaven is the place knowing that that outburst of anger is only temporary. Heaven is the place there's no more, daddy, you're annoying me. Sorry, guys, I do annoy my kids sometimes. Guilty. Hey, I am still in this flesh. I'm learning how to be godly one day at a time. Heaven is the place you can play with your kids and not get hurt. Guys, I pray this is encouraging to you. And heaven is the place sexual molestation doesn't happen. Amen. And you don't feel dirty anymore. Mm -hmm. You're not ashamed. Mm -hmm. And you're healed in the name of Jesus. Yes. Those of you who are sexually molested, I feel strongly to say this. You're not dirty. Mm -hmm. You're clean. Jesus yes. washed you clean. Yes. Washed you by his blood. Those of you who have been taken advantage of, men and women, Folks, he died to set you free. And he died to set your perpetrator free. Hurt people hurt people. They're going to a Christless eternity if they don't repent. Heaven is a place where the most heinous of things are covered by his blood. Case in point. This is controversial, but I believe he's there. Jeffrey Dahmer, who killed people, a lot of people, did a lot of nasty things, I'll leave it at that. Gave his life to Christ in jail. He had a problem with blacks, but then him and another black guy were cleaning an area of the jail. They were actually best friends and they were killed together. They're in the presence of, if, if they gave their life to Christ, they're in the presence of the Almighty. Uh, 
David, was it David Brooklyn, son of Sam? Killed a lot of people because his neighbor's dog told him to do so. Gave his life to Jesus. He preaches the gospel. We will see him in glory. Folks, heaven is real. Heaven is real. We do not live by sight, but by faith. Heaven is real. It's that passage in 1 Corinthians 2, verse 9, where he quotes Isaiah 64. What I did not see, an ear did not hear, and what never entered the human mind. Folks, if you've given your life to Jesus Christ, God prepared this for you who love him. Father in heaven, I thank you for this time. Mm -hmm. I thank you for such wonder, such privilege to share the testimony that you've given me through Leanne. I am un I'm an undeserving servant doing your will. I was only doing what I was asked. Father, please, please, Please send this message out. Please, oh God, please. Please, oh God. <laughs> oh God, please send this out. Oh God, just so that the world may know the God that they could serve and that they could have. Oh God, that they would not. Be afraid to trust you, oh God, that those who don't have you will end up in another horrible place of burning and sulfur and torment where the worm doesn't die, oh God. Amen. Help. Oh God, please don't let this stop here. Please don't let this stop here. In Jesus' name.